Father, we honor you this morning. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Honor and praise be unto you, Lamb of God. You are worthy of our praises. You are worthy of our praises. You are worthy of glory. We celebrate you this morning, Lamb of God. We bless you, O God, from the womb of a new day. We rejoice in you. Our heart rejoice in your expressions in the earth. Oh, we lift your name on high. You are worthy of glory and honor, praise and majesty, dominion be ascribed unto you, Lamb of God. We will come before you this morning. We rejoice in you. Oh, hallelujah. Praise to your name. Praise to your name. Praise to your name. Praise to your name, Lamb of God. Worship to your holy name, King of the ages. Who will not fear you? The whole earth is filled with your glory. Oh, hallelujah. The sovereign Lord has given to me a well-instructed tongue to know the words that sustains the weary. He awakens me morning by morning. Awakens my ears to listen like one that is being taught. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears and I have not been rebellious. Friends, I want to welcome you this morning to the Porter's Gate online broadcast. This is a platform where we express the heart of God, the mind of God, the desires of God and the intentions of His Kingdom. We are in the midst of a powerful restoration. There is a construction, a rebuilding. A realignment that is taking place within the hearts of the apprehended ones heaven has called us in this season to hear the sound of a regathering to the place where our lives can be built and can be equipped for that which has been designed and ordained for us for this season and time this is a sacred day we are in a sacred season and what do we mean by this it means that there are instructions that the, that the spirit of god is emphasizing and this is done in every generation that there is a generation there's a there's a caliber of people that god awakens in a generation who will go ahead of their brethren who will go before all right we are in that period in time and it's important that we understand the seriousness of the day the importance of the season so that we can accord amen yes the required rest you know response system to what heaven is emphasizing and i am you know glad to say that by god's grace i have been chosen all right by providence to be part of a prophetic voice bringing directions and clarity in regards to how god wants his house to be built to be formed how God wants his saints, all right, to align to the requirements of heaven's program for this season and time, all right? It is a condition of a heart. It is a position of a spirit. It is how we yield to the dealings of God. And I can assure you this morning that once again, the Father has touched my lips and I'm here to speak as his oracle. The Bible says, let he who speaks, speak as the oracle of God, as one that has been stirred by the Spirit. I do not come to promote myself. I do not come to speak my own agenda. I do not have a ministry that I'm building for myself. My desire is that my life become a conduit, an expression of what Christ wants to build and what Christ is expressing in the earth. And this is the reason you will find that scripture in Hebrews 3 that will be looking into of course we look at it we just look at it but this is a scripture that i've been tracking for many many years now all right every house is built by a man we can build our own thing we can even use god and use our gift and use our talent and use our skill to build something that is not a reflective of god's desire and design in the earth and of course such thing will not produce heaven's intention it is my desire, it is my longing, it is my quest that everything that my life is and represents builds God's intentions in the earth. And know that 
the concept of building is very very relevant to heaven's manifestation of you know kingdom agenda whatever god wants to do he builds it first if god is going to use you he builds you first if God is going to use your home, He builds your home first. If God is going to use your marriage, He builds it first. If God is going to use the ministries committed into your hand, He builds it first. And you know that in, in the place of building, there's always, excuse me, there's also, you know, the concept of, you know, pulling down, destroying. If you ever go to a building site, you will see certain things that have been discarded. You will see rubbles, okay? So it's important that we get a framework of what God, amen, is emphasizing what God is doing in our day so that we do not feel tired. We do not feel, you know, this thing is getting too much or for how long will this process, amen, take. I don't know for how long the process will take, but I know one thing that the quality of what we are called, amen, to represent or express in the earth will define the process. All right. So, the, the kind of things that you're going through, the, the emphasis of God for your life, the things that God is touching, that thing you don't want to hear. That every time you hear that thing, you shy away, you you flinch, you 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 almost like want to fight. Those are the things that God wants to deal with because those are the things that will puncture, that will frustrate, that will hinder the intentions of God in the future. So God will continue to deal with those areas until there is no aspect of you know self left you understand friends all right so every one of us are going through a season of pruning a season of refinement a season of threshing all right so that amen we can come out to be that you know worthy vessel meet for the master's use so i hope that you know you know what we are saying is clear because i know there are a lot of people watching following us there are ministers of god following us yes we are aware of that there are apostles there are prophets there are pastors there are teachers we are aware of that i'm aware of what god has called me to do and i'm aware of the responsibility god has placed upon my shoulder and daily i stand before the lord you know you know as best as i can in righteousness and in holiness to make sure that my life is a conduit and i tell you that has come with a huge price, with a huge price. Uh, but I, I, I'm able because he's granted me the grace, amen, to do that. So I'm a voice to the church. I'm a voice, amen, to the, you know, to the body of Christ. I'm a voice to the church of Christ globally, not just in South Africa, but in America, in Asia, in Europe, in Africa. And we want to continue to be that voice because that is what God has called me to be. And I cannot shy away. At, you know, at the early stage of my life, I try to run away. You know from this ministry but god says you cannot run you cannot run this is what i've called you so the dealings of god all right yes will be reflective in the kind of ministry he's committed into your hand so i'm saying all of this for you to you know you know bear with me <laughs> if that's the right word bear with me all right if i'm touching things that you know is almost like ouch all right something that is you know not, that is not sounding okay to your ears but you know it's the truth but you just don't like it all right because you've been raised in a particular frame you've been raised in a particular ideology and all of those things are the things god is dealing with god is dealing with our foundation is dealing with our ideologies and philosophy is dealing with our perception of him all right how we view god how we understand god god is correcting those those things and this is the reason why jesus christ came all right jesus is not just some figment of idea all right he came on earth he lived a particular kind of a life amen which is a pattern for every one of us i was so excited this morning just before i began you know the broadcast the lord dropped the scripture in my spirit and to me that's it and i'm like woo i love this so as as we continue to deal with issues amen of occupying remember the concept is we want to occupy amen till you know the the, the lord returns and the more i look into this you know a, a concept the more i see the complexity the more i see all right the wideness of this this mandate all right like i said this is a generational message and i pray all right that you know people of my generation will listen to what god is saying because we don't want to make the mistake of past generation all right we don't want to make the mistake when i talk about past generation i'm talking about you know the 20th century i'm not talking about some old generation. i'm just talking about the past you know 20th century 
There's a way that ministered deed, amen, the things of God responded to God that was okay, but was not the best. You understand? And, uh, you know, th- there's a tendency that, you know, the past generation lays the foundation for the next. So we, there are things that we have seen in the past that are not okay, that are not aligning, amen, to, you know, the blueprint of God's, you know, eternal prophetic counsel, you know, for, for humanity. And we want, all right, to correct that. And of course, that is one of the mandate or ministry of prophets, Prophets are sent, amen, yes, to deal with things that other people will be shying away from. Prophets are sent to speak, all right, regarding areas that others may feel, you know, are are awkward to speak about. You understand? So, you've got to understand and appreciate that I'm speaking from a prophetic, amen, office. I'm speaking from a prophetic, you know, position. I'm not just speaking as as one who has a prophetic gift. And we've gone beyond just speaking from a dimension of a gift. We're speaking from an office. This is an office. God has positioned me. So I am dead to, you know, to opinions. I am dead to my own ways. I am dead to, you know, if you like me or you don't like me. No, no, no. You know, you know, prophets don't have friends. If you find a prophet who has a friend, it's because God has placed that person in the life of such. <laughs> you understand? Yes. Either to support, amen, or to continue to give, you know, a, a direction or encouragement. You understand? Those are the friends of prophets. They are enigma to their generation. I am an enigma to my generation. Enigma, or even to the body of Christ. So I don't mind that people, you know, throw stones, but I want to speak, all right, as the Father will allow me. I want my life to continue to you know express and manifest heaven's prophetic intention for my generation we live to fulfill amen god's desire and design i know as i'm speaking i'm addressing certain spirits and it's important we do all right so if you find people all right those who are in the prophetic that are being supported you understand but either financially or not is because those people God has touched their heart because the things that they will be saying will will not agree with you know the populace will not agree with the popular opinion we are raising a standard hallelujah and we do need support and I do need support but I'm not begging for your support I'm saying be led by your spirit let the spirit of God steer your heart amen to see that this is the voice and I want to be part of what God is using this man to do all right so we are dealing with some very powerful principle i read a scripture that has become a foundational scripture you know to our ministry of course a framework to our ministry and i quickly want to read it again in case you forget the sovereign lord has given to me a well instructed tongue to know the words that sustains the weary he awakens me morning by morning awakens my ears to listen like one that is being taught the sovereign lord has opened my opened my ears and i've not been rebellious this is a good place to be so you can see you know all that we've done yesterday is good that that does does have become a layer to the next thing that god is doing today that i can come every day hallelujah yes of 365 you know days in a year and continue to speak without mixing the words all right without being tired what why because daily there is what a speaking there is a renewal hallelujah there's an awakening hallelujah there is a stirring of the spirit it is the lord that is that is steering that is leading that is awakening you to speak all right so that is good all right with uh, maybe an introduction a foundation uh, maybe in in expressing the philosophy that guides this assignment maybe you bump into this platform and you're not sure of what is going on well i just gave you uh, you know a, a kind of a blueprint a philosophy a culture that defines amen this work this assignment this ministry we're dealing with all right uh, uh, the concept of occupying till christ return all right that is an instruction the lord gave to us to us end of last year i hope you know that god does not live amen in 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 calendar season calendar season basically are given to humans to help them to measure all right to define all right yes to 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 plan you understand but god doesn't live in our calendar yet. so god began to speak to us from november yet, you know last year all right about the new season he's bringing us into and whenever god brings us into a new season he emphasizes what he wants us to know 
all right seasons are the building block amen of the maturation of the church seasons are the building block when a season comes god starts to speak and start to deal with us either from a personal level or from a corporate level there are things that he begins to emphasize that he begins to you know you know highlight that he wants you to correct you right now you're going through a season and sometimes those season you may not like it you may not like the way god is speaking you may not like the tonation of his voice you may not like the things he's talking about but you need those those things amen in order for you to move to the next season in order for you to grow in order for you to mature or else you're going to remain in that same class you're not going to grow so it is very important that when God speaks that we quickly respond to his voice yes I know you know the Bible but you don't know the things that God is emphasizing and that is why amen God will you know use you know his prophets God will send his word and say this is the way I'm coming to you in this season this is what I am doing within my body so the church will hear if the church is humble enough because we cannot step into the seasons of God or respond to the voice of God if we are proud one of the things that have that almost killed in fact that killed you know the the former move and the past generation is pride and you know those pride emanate from the place of their achievement achievement can create pride in our heart all right in the place of ministry we can develop pride i say how do you know that well look at lucifer lucifer was in the midst of ministry when pride was found when iniquity was found in his heart and this is why you need to track christ at every interval of your life your yastic must not be your achievement your yastic must be the fact that you are being conformed hallelujah into the image of god that is success that is what the lord is looking for ministry can bring you down ministry hallelujah can be the demise of your life if you don't understand priority while i was praying this morning the lord said to me because I was looking at time. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I started a bit late. I was looking at time. I was like, God. But I was praying. I was in a place of prayer. And the more I pray, it's like the more I want to pray. And I'm like, God, but I, I need to broadcast. And the, the Lord said, are you going to focus on that ministry? I am first your ministry. You ministered to me first. So sometimes God, amen, wants more time from you. And But you're looking at time. You're looking at the congregation. Oh, they, they'll be waiting for me. Let them wait. Because whatever you're going to do there is because of what you have received there. So if you don't have a ministry that is focused on God, the very thing that you're doing that you call ministry is going to be your downfall. And this is why a lot of people, a lot of men of God, they get heady. They, don't, they get to the point and they think, well, uh, see what I've done. There's no one like me. Oh my God, you're making a mistake. <laughs> you understand? You're making a mistake. All right, you're making a big mistake. Maybe while I'm talking on this, maybe I should just jump into what the Lord dropped in my spirit this morning. You know, I thought I was going to quickly go back to some of the things we deal with, we talked about yesterday, which is always my pattern. I like to, you know, reverse. I like us to, you know, you know, review, and then we build on it. Okay, but I like that scripture we we, we looked at yesterday. Do you still remember that scripture? Do you remember that scripture? Where's that scripture again? We, 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 we found it in uh, Romans. Where's, where's that scripture? Romans 13. Let me see. Yes. Beautiful scripture. Uh, let me quickly read this scripture. I cannot resist this scripture. Romans 13. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to go to Philippians 2. Romans 13. Because I thought this scripture just laid for us. A powerful spiritual framework. All right. Are you with me this morning? If you are with me, just say amen. I will hear you. You, you, you won't believe it. I will hear you. And do this. And do this. Can you see that? Do this. It's an attitude. Whenever they say do this, it's an attitude. I just want to read. I'm not going to elaborate. And do this understanding the occasion. That word occasion is understanding the season. You've got to understand the season. I remember I was saying season speaks of dress code. Dress code is a mindset. It's a belief system. It's a pattern of existence. Amen. It's the way you think. Your dress is a reflection of your pattern of, of, of thinking. There's a pattern of thinking they want us to have at every season. So Paul said, amen, to the church in Rome. Remember that the context is God is, Paul is speaking to the church in Rome. The seat of, the seat of you know, Roman Empire power. Imagine starting a church in Rome. <laughs> all right i said i'm not going to preach let's just let me just read he said and do this understanding the occasion the hour has come 
for you to wake up from amen from slumber why because the pressure the political pressure the political amen pressure the 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 the, the cultural pressure of you know the the environment of the roman culture was almost you know you know bringing the church to a point of you know slumbering where they're beginning to sleep so paul is encouraging them is encouraging them do this guys understand the occasion the hour has come for you to what to wake up from your slumber so they were they were already sleeping for you to wake up then he said he said for our salvation is nearer our salvation is nearer amen remember they already saved these are saved people so what salvation is talking about he's talking about a redemption that speaks into their mission amen to creation their 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 position of expression and 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 declaring amen the purposes of god the earth needs salvation government needs salvation hallelujah different works of life need salvation so the salvation is talking about here amen it's not a personal salvation it's a corporate salvation is a salvation that speaks into amen the the visibility if you will the movement and the manifestation of you know the intentions of god the kingdom of god hallelujah that salvation is is the is the expression is the, the, the word is 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 more visibility that's the right word it's the visibility amen of you know of the of the of the intensity of the things of god hallelujah our salvation is nearer is nearer than we first believe so don't stop praying that's why he's telling them don't stop fasting don't stop doing the right thing amen don't go into slumber for our salvation is nearer than when we first believe you know when you first believe there's always that zeal that passion but after a while you know the zeal start dropping ah we've seen it before what's your what's wrong with you why are you making so much noise no 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 we've been it no no the the the, the zeal should be increasing not a um, diminishing the fire should be increasing, not diminishing. Amen. Yes. We live in a day where there's a lot of activity, there's a lot of noise, but little fire, little passion. Amen. Little burden for the things of God. Why? Because, you know, certain preferences, amen, has taken over our lives and vis a vis, amen, what we represent. He said, The night is near. Look at that. See, excuse me. The night is nearly over. The day, hallelujah, the day, the day has drawn near. The day is drawing near. The day is drawing near. We are moving away from the night season. The night season is, is when amen, the, Jesus called the hour of darkness. Jesus said, this is the hour of darkness. <laughs> Remember on the cross, he said, this is the hour of darkness. There's an hour of darkness where it will seem as if you're being defeated. Nothing is working out. Everything is looking crazy. He calls it the hour of darkness. Alright? So, Paul said, Amen. The day has drawn near. So, let us lay aside the deeds of what? Of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Come on. Put on the armor of light. Light, light is an attitude. Light, Amen, is a garment we wear. Put on the armor of light. Why? Because the days of darkness, amen, is getting over. Let us put on. Let us put aside. Verse, then he went for it. He said, let us, let us lay aside the deeds of darkness and let us put on. Can you see? You've got to cast it off. You've got to put it on. They say, wear the Lord Jesus. Put on the armor of light. All right. Verse 13 says, let us behave decently. All those nonsense ability you know mindset and attitude people are portraying you know you gotta bible said let us behave decently modestly come on you gotta start preaching talking about modesty the lord said to me you cannot run away from sanctification don't think it's an archaic message no it is a message that will save you if you're not sanctified if you're not living a holy life the enemy will put holes in your life you will not be able to hold the things of God. Come on. That's my definition of holiness. Holiness means wholeness. It means the ability, amen, to carry, to contain the things of God. If you live a wayward life, the enemy, hallelujah, yes, will puncture you. Will put all kinds of, you know, things in your life that the things of God will not be able to stay. You will not be able to understand and walk, amen, in the things of God. You cannot, man of God, you cannot shy away or run away from a, pure, a life of purity. When you begin to touch the dimension of purity, you notice, amen, 
that your countenance, your belief system, your value system start changing. I didn't write the scripture. I'm only reading, amen, maybe giving some a bit of explanation. But I said I'm not going to preach on this because, but this is something that we've got to wear as a mindset. Because the days we're living are like the days, amen, the brethren lived in Rome. This is, this is a message to the church of Rome. This is the seat of power where Caesar lives. Certain people don't have the capacity, amen, to build in certain places. Your apostolic mandate, amen, yes, will be determined by where you are sent. Regions, hallelujah, will define the capacity and the quality of your, of your thrust, of your apostolic trust, of your prophetic trust. You, you go as an apostle into certain place that you have not been graced for the land will swallow you the place will bury you and I'm not just talking about you know just an apostle I'm talking about anyone with an apostolic mandate there are people who have got apostolic mandate to the business society to the business community all right there are people who got apostolic mandate amen to institutions all right yes their, their, their mission is, amen, to educational institution. You've got to have the right mindset, the right belief system to be able to, because there are powerful demonic principality, amen, that are being positioned to guard, amen, the gates of those institutions. So if you're just coming with, you know, a skill of a teacher, I'm just a teacher, hallelujah, praise God. <laughs> they say, look at you. you, you don't know nothing. You don't know that we define and determine, amen, how people must think with their quality of education or with their mindset of education. Have you met people very educated, but they're as blind as a bat? Have you seen what they're doing to professors today? You, you as a professor, you've st- all your life you study certain things you can no longer say. The, that that culture will shut your mouth down. <laughs> so you you see what I'm saying? You need a man, uh, you know that grace that have been crafted, hallelujah, in the spirit that your your skill is just a gateway into accessing realms where you are able to declare see of the Lord without anybody stopping you or hindering you. So you, in the days we live in, you cannot just depend on the skill. That you are good in something does not mean, amen, that you have a voice in that area. Because the, the people, the watchers, the people who, who are in charge of that skill area, all right, they've They've, come, they've paid allegiance, hallelujah, yes, to certain powerful demonic spirit, amen, yes. So, so they become the voice, amen, the territorial voice over that realm, e.g. the world of finance. Don't you understand that are gatekeepers over, you know, economy, amen, over finance, over trade, amen, yes, there are, there are, I mean, that's why they go to Brussels. All those guys in Brussels that they go and sit down and do all kinds of... They know what they're doing. These people are interacting with powers, with all kinds of spirit. And you think, well, I I study economics. Therefore, (laughs) they will finish you. You understand? Today, that spirit has entered the realm of theology. So back in the days we went to school and go and study theology. Theology is not it's not the way you used to know it. Today they are removing things they don't like in the Bible. They're removing the idea of he and she and all of them. they're removing it and they are rewriting, they are rewriting, you know, you know, you know, things that they call theology. That God is just an idea. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So we have to have all, all of this understanding in order to be able to, you know, build a generation that, that has the voice, that has, amen, the backbone, amen, that will not bow, like Daniels, like the Josephs of this world. People who are highly skilled, highly skilled. These are not mediocre, highly skilled, but they are connected, hallelujah, to the, to the heavenly order. They have become principality themselves. They've been given the scepter to rule and reign over those realms to bring Christ. Remember, what we are talking about, amen, is that the knowledge of glory covers the earth as the water covers the sea. For that to happen, a people must be trained, must be equipped, amen, must be mandated by the authority of heaven to function within the sphere of life. So even if you are every day scabashing and praying and and you don't have a skill, you are not good in something, then you don't have an entrance. So these are days we need to teach believers, amen, to learn skill, to be skillful in something. Skill, hallelujah, are entry point. 
They don't determine the victory. They don't determine the... No, no. But they are access points. So those access points then gives you the ability or the authority to exert, amen, the kingdom of God in that realm. And of course, all of that comes through, amen, wisdom. Wisdom builds a house. Because you can't do this. You can't go there and start saying, hallelujah, praise God. Everybody's going to bow to me. They will... They will make sure that amen, they drain your life. So you've got to know how. You see, the Bible says we must be wise as a serpent, yet, yet be harmless as a dove. You've got to know how to maneuver your way, how to bring the things of God in a manner that, amen, before they know it, they won't know what hits them. <laughs> all right. So that is what Paul is saying there. And all of that requires holiness. Wholeness. It requires, amen, that you bring your mind down, submit it to Christ. Amen. It requires purity of life. It requires that if you are struggling with a man lost, you've got to deal with it. Because the enemy is going to use that to destroy you. To destroy your gift and to shut your mouth. Amen. You've got to deal with all the things that have been de-emphasized in the past. We have to deal with loss. We have to deal with masturbation. We have to deal with perversion. We have to deal with, you know, you know, mama, you know, yeah, where, where God wants us to prosper. Yes, God wants you to prosper. But the way he wants you to prosper is the way you don't want to. Hallelujah. Accept. Nobody's saying God doesn't want you to have money. But before God commits money into your hand, there are things he wants to take you through. So that when the enemy comes and throw money on your lap, you say, Satan, sorry, <laughs> try another one. <laughs> now when they throw something to you, you're, you, maybe the Lord, you know, maybe this is how God really wants to bless me. Like somebody says, all right, <clears throat> if they bring mo blood money to the church, say, bring it, the blood of Jesus will wash, the, will wash it. That's, that's the mindset you are hearing today in the church. That people don't mind amen, to, to get what, whatever they want. They don't mind to use whatever means. As long as that thing looks grand. As long as those things look big. As long as those things look yes. As long as people can, people are going wow. You know we like to wow people. Just wow them. It doesn't work like that. People may be wow but God, God, is, not, God, is, God, God is not happy with you. Are you getting the point? So you have to straighten your life up. Yes, this is a message for the remnants. It's not for everybody. If everybody hears it, oh well, I'll be happy. I'll, I mean, my job will be done well and I'll be grateful to God. But this is for those, amen, who want to go the extra mile. This is for those who want to go and meet the Lord, amen, outside the camp. Everything that I'm talking about, I have gone through them. I have struggled past all of them. I've told you that. It's not a secret. So I'm not speaking from just a the theory mindset. I'm speaking from a position of where I have been. So if you, if you love yourself, you will take this thing. And I'm telling you that there is no way, there's no way you can succeed. I've come to that understanding. Hallelujah. This is my almost 35 years in the work of God. I've come to realize that there is no way out. That without holiness, no one sees God. No one touches the things of God. In fact, you will not be able to carry the things of God. It will burn. You will throw it away. Because the things of God must be done with a, with, with a lifestyle, with an attitude of authenticity. Your life, your, sick, your, your private life, amen, and your public life must be one. What you see here is what you get. I don't have another life. I used to. But that life, God ended it. God ended that life. So what you see is what you get. And this is how God wants us to live a life. So when you come into my life now, I'm not seeking, I'm not running to hide things and to, no, 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 no. What you see is what you get. And I'm saying this because this is how God wants us to represent him so that our life, amen. Listen, daily you must die. For me to talk like this, it means that when I'm done with this message, I die. You know, when I finish this, this message, I still go back to God. So, well, I've delivered your message. Now, refill me. 
I don't want to live on the glory of what I've said yesterday. No, I want you to refill me, renew me, so that amen, I can have a freshness tomorrow when I come. I can speak from a different dimension. So everything that amen can derail or distract me, I deal with them severely. Severely. I give myself blue eye. They said if your eyes will cause you to sin, plug it off. You have to be brutal when it comes to the things of God. When it comes to ministry, you have to have a different mindset. You have to have a different belief system. And this is what I quickly want to talk about this morning. Alright? Remember now we're dealing with how to occupy till Christ return. That's what we're dealing with. We've talked about God wants us to occupy till he comes. Yes? We've talked about that. We At least we understand that this is what God wants. That's idealistic. Now, how do we do that? That's the next thing that we're dealing with. Alright? Yes. So, in dealing with that, we say we need to have an understanding of what is called present truth. Now, we're dealing with a foundational framework for kingdom occupation. Today, we're dealing with the part three. Okay? You see? Can you see that I'm a, I'm a good teacher <laughs> as a prophet? Can you see the way I'm building precept upon precept, line upon line? There is no confusion. There's no ambiguity about the things of God. You understand? You must know what we're dealing with. You must know the tunation God is expressing itself. Okay? Alright? And then we looked at this scripture yesterday also. As we begin to lay the foundation. Alright? We began to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Friends, note this. These are not just scriptures to know by head. You've got to sow them into the soil of your spirit until they begin to germinate. You've got to cultivate. You understand? Yes. I love the scripture that says, you know, a farmer went, yes, to sow his seed. The things of God, amen, are seed. The things of God begins with seed. Hallelujah. And then they end up in harvest. That's why the scripture says, the seed a man sows, they will reap in harvest. They will reap as a fruit. So be careful, amen, of the seed that you sow. Be careful of the kind of seed in your hand. If the seed in your hand is not a good seed, please throw it away. God are the days where we use scripture, amen, to, 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 to buttress our own kind of thing. So sow a seed. When I say sow a seed, that back in the days in the body, they say give money. I still believe in that. I believe in giving and I do give myself. But I, I also believe that amen, life is about seeding. But the most important seed is the seed of God's word. Because that is the context to which God speaks to us about seed. It is the instrument. It is the agency that God applies amen, in creation. In the beginning, God said... His words are his seed. So be careful, hallelujah, of how you understand the things of God. Because, listen, it will not be said on that day, alas, it's a mistake. Uh, angel, I was only joking. If you say it and you don't mean it, you reap the fruit. What goes out of your mouth, amen, is a seed. And you have to see the word of God that way. God, amen, did not give you a suggestion. God gives you a command. The word of God is a command. So your attitude, my attitude towards the word of God has to change. Those are some of the things the spirit of God wants us, amen, yes, to know. Because how we understand seed will define and determine, hallelujah, our expectation. When you sow a seed, you must have an expectation of for harvest. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest time will not cease. Please take your mind away a bit from finance to, amen, the principle of the manifestations of the things of God. Okay? One of the things God is doing nowadays, amen, is they are correcting, if you will, updating our mindset, our paradigm. So we are not locked, amen, in one half truth or in one aspect of truth while we are not able to apply other dimension, amen, of life to that truth or other dimension of truth to that life. Okay? Very important. I hope you are still with me and I hope the things that I'm saying are making sense to you because this is very, very important. Very, 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 very critical. All right? 
your attitude to the word of God will define how far you're going to go in carrying and representing, if you will, manifesting the things of God. The things of God, you can't see them. Spiritual things, you cannot see them. You can't touch them. You know, when I say you can't see them, meaning you can't see them with your natural, physical, you know, eyes or mind. But you can perceive them. That's why God said, I'm doing a new thing. Can't you perceive them now? It's springing forth. <laughs> when God is doing a new thing, you need a new paradigm. You need a new, you know, spiritual approach. You need a new template. If God is doing a new thing, you can't come with the old template. You will not understand. Like I said, God may be doing a new thing around you, but you can't see it. Because the way he's coming to do that new thing, it's not the way you are used to. It's not the way, hallelujah, you presume or assume. It's not the idea you have in mind. But God is doing a new thing. Alright? So, these words must come to us from a new light. That's just what I'm trying to say. Alright? These words are tools. They are materials. Amen? They are the building blocks that we need to craft and build. Amen? God's glorious house in this end of days. Why? Because that is the place that people are going to be trooping to. Amen. The mountain of the Lord, hallelujah, is a house. The Bible says the church of the Lord is the ground and pillar of truth. In the last day, in the last day, the nation shall, shall troop, they shall say, come let us go up to the mountain of the house of the God of Jacob is a mountain, but is a house. Why is it a mountain? Because it's a dimension of, of a lofty life. Amen. Yes, that is in Christ Jesus. Whenever we talk about Christ, we go up. Whenever we talk about the things of the kingdom, we go up, we climb up. Hallelujah. We don't go down to the house of God. Let us go up to the house of God. You ascend to the things of God. Hallelujah. Is, is, is this principle, amen, getting clearer to us? Because it's important. If, if it's not clear, then the way we interact with these things, amen, we will interact with them with a levity of heart. And that's not what God, amen, wants. So we're looking at this. He said, for we are God's fellow workers. We spoke about that yesterday. All right? Why are we God's fellow workers? Because God needs men and women on earth, amen, to represent him. All right? To carry out his intention. That was the same thing Jesus did. Basically what Paul is saying here. Was amen, a reflection of how Jesus did his ministry. He said whatever I did here on earth. Amen. Are the things that I saw my father do. So amen. Jesus amen, had a very you know, close understanding of working you know, in alignment with his father. You understand. He said the things that I do. Are the things I see my father do. So when Paul said we are co-workers. So there's a work. There's a ministry. Amen this that God wants us to carry out on his behalf of course God is a spirit but we are both spirit amen and and humans me, meaning that you know we a spirit we can walk into uh, uh into a mall people don't see spirit walking but they see us but we are spirit being we carry the spirit of God so that spirit that we carry there amen engage it with engages with any other negative spirit any other false spirit that's why I keep saying hey Please understand this. Humans are spirits. If you understand that simple term, how you deal with people will change. Humans are spirit, and that could be a good spirit. <laughs> that could be a spirit of light, or could be a spirit of darkness. So you will see people well dressed, looking nice, smelling nice, but they are first spirits. So how they relate how they contact how they interact with you are sourced from the order of their spiritual life their spiritual being their spiritual state and if they are you know if they are spirits who are not mature they're just good brothers and good sisters it means that they can be they can be employed by the devil have you met people like that <laughs> good people but they do terrible things. They do crazy things. They, even they themselves are wondering, how in the world did I do that? They don't know. Why? Because they are spirits, but they are not growing. So the enemy just come and whisper to them. The enemy just borrow them. You know, let me use you a bit. <laughs> Sometimes they use them and dumb them. Sometimes they use them and stay there. Because God created humans to be spirit. And the reason for that is so that they can... They, they, you know, they, they can bridge the two order. They can bridge the realm of the, the of the realm of heaven and the realm of the earth. 
That's why God created man. All right. God created man in his image, which is a spiritual image. But God gave this man a body. Jesus said, a body you are prepared for me. Hallelujah. Lo, I come is a spirit coming. Amen. To do the will of God. But that spirit needs a body, needs a house. So they have to find a Mary. They are Jack Mary. They say, you, you've been found, you know, to be worthy, to be faithful among women. We are going to use you, amen. Yes, to, to, to shape a body. Hallelujah. For the Christos. Glory to Jesus. Huh? Is this clear, friends? So how we interact with people has to be clear. All of you listening to me, you are listening to me, amen, from a dimension of how you have been spiritually shaped, how you have been spiritually orientated. Amen. If your spirit is, is excited about the things that I'm talking about, it means you've grown. It means there's a desire in you to want to learn more, to want to grow, to want to, you know, fulfill the will of God. If your spirit is, is there, if there's a resentment, it means there is something negative on the inside of you, amen, that don't want to hear the things that I'm talking about. And I can understand because of where you are spiritually. But you have to say, but that is the word of God. I need to hear that. You have to shut the voice of that spirit, amen. You have to, you know, build you know, I, 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 that spirit, you have to feed that spirit, amen, with the things of God. Of course, you start with, with the milk, you understand? And then you go to the bread, and then you go to the meat, and then you go to, amen, daily living through, amen, what you call the, wa the water of life, amen. You daily drink the water of life so that you are not dehydrated, amen, spiritually. Are, are you getting the point that I'm making? So you've got to feed your spirit just like you eat daily, amen. Some of you, before you came listening to me now you've already eaten some of you might be having break breakfast right now yes because you cannot do without eating your body at, at least if you're not fasting you understand you 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 want to eat and many of us don't eat amen you know you know uh, uh, to 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 leave we just eat amen to basically survive we're just eating you know eating not because we need to eat you become a gluten you know you're just eating you become addicted to eating that's not eating all right but you need to eat to keep your body, to keep healthy, you, you know, to, to have energy so you can move. All right. That's the purpose for food. All right. Don't eat as if amen, there is no tomorrow. Okay. Let, let's move on. Are you, are you getting the point that I'm making here? So we're dealing with something that is very, very critical. We, you are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. So God, God wants to walk with you, but God also, amen, wants to create certain things within this field god's field is 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 is, uh, is his dockyard god's field amen is 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 his laboratory that's a, I, I like that word that's a word i like that word god's field amen is his lab god's field we're not talking about a field of harvest here no we're talking about a field where things are grown where things amen are brewed where things amen are manufactured what, what we are doing right now, amen, on this platform most time is a reflection of all of this dimension that Paul is talking about. But in most, uh, 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 excuse me, but the most important aspect is this one that is called God's field. So when you come to this place, you come to this lab, amen, we begin to interact and deal with certain dimension in your life that makes you, amen, become a productive field. All right, God tests certain things through your life, amen. Yes, we bring perspective and clarity, and that you know what they do in laboratory. All right, you know what they do, it's in lab that they bring out some of the best phones, some of those devices you are using. It's because certain people, amen, were in a lab, they work on it, they work with their idea. Understand, God's field is a place where they, you know, they bounce certain ideas, they deal with certain things, all right, they, they point at certain things, they remove certain things. <clears throat> They bring clarity to you. They couple all kinds of things together. So by the time you are released out there, hallelujah, all kinds of things start to happen. So you are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. You see, you are God's building. This is why we like to talk about the concept of wisdom builds a house. All of this thing that we're talking about, amen, are all framework that allow us to become that unformidable entity on earth, amen, that can fill the earth, 
Remember, the idea is the concept of Daniel, where the Bible says, Amen, that stone that was cut, that, that smashed, Amen, yes, the, the, the idol of Nebuchadnezzar, that's, that little stone, Amen, grew to become a massive, Amen, un unstoppable, you know, mountain that covered, that fills the entire earth. That's where we are heading to. All right? That is where we are heading to. That is how we are going to occupy. To occupy means we are going to target, amen, certain, you know, major principality. You see, that is a principle in warfare. In warfare, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, uh, um, you don't prepare to fight the entire army. We've seen how, amen, armies with lesser, you know, infantry, lesser troops, amen, defeated, amen, enemies with more, amen, troops. Because battles are not fought by strength, battles are fought and won by strategies. The day I just said, battles are not fought by strength, battles are fought by what? By strategy, by wisdom. Wisdom builds a house. You see what God did in the land of Nebu in the land of Babylon. He didn't need to fight every priest. He didn't need to fight everybody there. They just target targeted Amen. That high thing that was built that exalted himself above the <laughs> the image of God. They just that image represent Amen. Yes, you know a Babylon represent in Nebuchadnezzar and of course represent Amen. Yes, the powerful empires of this world. All God need is one stone. And they didn't need to go for the head. No, they went for the toe. They went for the weakest point. Iron and clay. They know that iron and clay, amen, don't stick together. So God went for the, because the, everything is a part of a structure. If there is a weaker, and this, listen, the same principle applies to the things of God. My word, the Lord just dropped that in my spirit now. If you build something for God, you're building amen, a structure for God and there's a weak point. The enemy is going to attack that weak point. He's going to come for that weak, that weak point. That weak point of your life. That's where it's going to come. And all the massive things you build, all the powerful things you build, all the dimensions of the gold and the, and the, and the bronze and the silver and all of those great things you've done will be pulled down by that weak area that place of pride that place of weakness that place of lust <clears throat> it comes for that place and then you see the entire house <sighs> crumble can you see the technology <laughs> God is an intelligent God he didn't need to prove his strength by starting to you know start cutting the head and you know and just chop 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 down you know like bruce lee you chop 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 no 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 the, the the stone just went for the feet the feet they went for the ten you know the ten toes all right that is a mixture of iron and clay which is where we are today in the order of human historic you know you know a uh, uh, position of power and authority we are in the last lap where you see they are trying to come together and try to form all kinds of alliances <laughs> and they try to build this thing there's a building amen of of you know of Bab babylonian you know you know a, a idol we've seen it it's been erected not like it's gonna be it's already erected but we're seeing amen the, the dying days of that thing God, amen, is crafting. The Bible says a stone was cut with that hand. Without human effort. That's why I'm telling you, this thing is going to be dealt with, amen, by, 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 the, by the strength of the spirit. Not by might, not by power. It is the quality, amen, of our spiritual life that will bring to an end, amen, the mystery called Babylon. It is the quality of our spiritual life that will bring down, hallelujah, the mystery of Babylon in the political state, in the 
macroeconomic financial state, amen, within, you know, you know, institutions of government and, and parastatus, hallelujah. It is a quality of a spiritual life, a spiritual state. So we have to know where we are focusing. Our priorities has to be clear. We're coming for that, amen, toe, that iron and clay. I love that. So, you are God's field. You are God's, you know, uh, God's building. According to the grace of God, which has been given to me. That grace is a resource. Grace is not just an unmerited favor of God. That's, that's a lower definition. That's a charismatic definition. Grace is a resource to build and to finish the intentions of God for the earth. Grace is beyond just an unmerited favor. Grace is the capacity, is a resource, is a strategy, is a, is, 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 is a lifestyle that heaven gives to you. How do you think Jesus finished the work he was assigned for three and a half years? Because they graced him. I am graced for what I'm doing. If I'm not graced for what I'm doing, I can tell you, friends, by now I should have been shut down. By now I should have been dead. By now, or I, I, I should have gone hide my head somewhere. You know, thinking that I have failed in life. It takes grace for you to be hitting, for you to be beaten down, and you get up again. Those apostles, those those elements, they had grace. Those you know, women, hallelujah. Who, who walk with amen, the early church they all had grace that's why they did what they could do they did the kind of things that even after you throw them amen, to lion's den they are still smiling they were not afraid of death in fact death was afraid of them <laughs> death was afraid of those company of people they lived in a dimension that was outside their time that was outside their world they have been swallowed up by immortality. Aye. Did you hear what I've said? Those people have been swallowed up by immortality. You can't kill a dead person. You can't get them angry. You can't stop them. They've been baptized. They are God's workers. They are God's fellow workers. They are God's field. They are God's building. They are grace. And grace is a gift, but grace also can be built up. Grace can be stayed. When you connect with the right people, when you connect with somebody like Isaiah, you will suddenly begin to realize that there is something about the grace of this servant of God, all right, that is flowing into your life. I've seen some, I've seen some people right now following me that I'm mentoring. I'm seeing some of my grace, the grace that God has placed. Yes, grace can be transferred. I've seen it. If you're genuinely tracking this thing that we're talking about, before you know it, all right, you will begin to, you know, do certain things, act in a certain way, you know, you know, dear certain things. You, you just be wondering, where did this come from? By the time you realize, oh, oh okay, I know where I, came, I got it from. Yes. So you don't follow from afar. And this is the reason why I try as much as possible to keep my life pure because I know something about my life is being transferred into people. And you like it or not, if, if you have a bad spirit, that same spirit can be transferred to the people. I don't want that. I don't want that for anyone following me. I want them to pick all of the grace that God has given to me to enhance their life. That is work of, that's the work of a father. A father enhances, amen, their sons. I'm talking about biological father. And if we're all connected to Christ, who is our head, we should be enhanced. And if God has placed certain people in our life to enhance us, to give us sight, and you are open, you are humble, not pride, you can't come to the things of God, amen, by night. You want to, you want to touch dimensions in Isaiah Phillips, but you want to come by night. Never, you're not going to touch it. It's not going to work for you. You have, to be, you have to be bold. You have to be open. You have to come in humility. You have to say, I need grace from you, sir. I need 
I need to learn from you. I want to sit under your auspice. I want to grow. This is what we call mentorship. It's not me giving you a certificate. It's me giving you a spiritual approval that no power of hell can stop. Are you getting this? We have to bring you to understand and get educated. You may have money more than me. You may have class. You may have God knows what. But you don't have what I have. And you need it. You humble yourself. That is how we touch the things of God. You don't come in the night. Like Nicodemus. He loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. So he had to approach the things of God. You know I used to preach on this. Because these are part of dimension that we have to come into. Alright. If we are going to occupy if we're going to fulfill God's intention you have to recognize that grace is not defined by a car it's not defined by a house it's not defined amen by the number of you know a certificate you see on the wall of a man you tap grace by looking at the quality of his spirit and when you give you're given to that thing when you give to a man of grace there's something about his life that is poured out into you It was Isaac that said to his father, all right? He said, he said to his sons, go and kill me. Go and get one of those venison. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. He said, go, go, go get me one of those venison. So that when I eat, my spirit can bless you. There's a blessing that will come from a dimension of a well, of a grace, of an experienced father at the gate. That when you please such a person, you walk in humility and in understanding, hallelujah, of what that man carries. You honor that man from your heart, not from your head. You're honoring not because you want to get something, but because you see something God has poured and that thing has come with great price. You do that, something about that man will flow out of you. A woman, oftentimes is men. Somebody needed to hear that. All right. So, all right. Don't forget what I want to talk about. The highlight of what I want to talk about this morning, amen, is, um, is the mind of Christ. Okay. So I, I, need, I need to shift your mind to that, you know, to that as I'm expressing this. I need you to keep your mind on the paradigm of Christ, the mind of Christ, amen, as the grace to allow us to be able to develop you know the materials that will equip us in order to occupy so i'm going to tell you why i'm saying that because we cannot occupy until we have been occupied by christ the lord dropped that in my spirit this morning we cannot occupy the earth we cannot fill the earth until we ourselves have been filled by christ that's why Paul will pray that you may be filled, that you may be filled, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. If you read the prayer of you know, Paul to the church of Ephesus, you will understand. And this is the reason why I'm going to talk about that scripture that I need to talk about. But I'm just, you know, kind of going back to what we talked about yesterday. All right. But from a new perspective here on, you know, first Corinthians chapter three. What, these are tools, building blocks. Amen yes so it says for you are god's fellow workers you are god's field you are god's amen building according to the grace of god which has been given to me to him paul an individual as a wise master builder <laughs> why was paul building he was building people because people are carriers amen of if you will the, the tools, the capacity, the grace, the resource, the skill to change, to transform. All right? Are you getting what I'm saying? Whatever God wants to build in the earth, it builds first. in people that are available for him. God does not hijack people and just start pouring things into them. No. If God, if God calls you, God taps you, you know what he does? He, he has called you, but he sends you first, amen, to the place where you will be prepared. That was what we saw with the life of Esther. They were going to use Esther, amen. When they, when they found Esther, 
she was not the most beautiful person around. <laughs> Hello, all the sis. When they found Esther, she was not the most beautiful person around. But there was a Mordecai, amen, that had been positioned by God, amen, to, to train, to beautify. Beauty is not just about facial expression. Beauty, amen, is the expression of an attitude. It is the adorning of the heart, not that of the head. Virtue, amen, is an attitude. It's not just a release of power. When Jesus said, amen, yes, virtue left me. It was saying somebody with the right attitude touched me. Therefore, power was released. That's why I always tell people that faith is an attitude now faith is that now is an attitude amen of a position that you have to be in order to interact with the things of god so having a wrong attitude disqualify you from touching the things of god there are people who have built wrong attitude around power gift around great giftings they build their giftings they build their attitude around giftings that will never hold. That will never assist you. I am very, 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 you know, uh, 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 interested in attitudes. You can have an anointing that is dropping. I'm not moved by your anointing. I'm moved by your attitude. I'm moved by, you know, your sense of sensitivity to, to, to spiritual things, to spirits. So if you don't have the right spirit, you don't have the right belief system, you don't have the right understanding about the things of God, you are disqualified. They will not allow you to touch the things of God. Because they know that if you touch it, you're, you're going to spoil it. You're going to misrepresent it. So you'll be checking. You will see it. That's why you need a revelation. To have a revelation, hallelujah, you need to be humble. Whenever you see the ministry of revelation, just look on the other side. You will see humility. You will never see pride and revelation working together. No. Because revelation is light. And the first thing light does, amen, it banishes darkness. It banishes pride. It banishes everything that is soulish, that is carnal. And this is why, amen, the soul and the spirit are forever at war. Because most of us, most of us, our soul is a reflection of the old Adamic nature, which is what darkness. And that's why we have to train and equip, amen, and resource our spirit so our spirit can be strong to do what? To overshadow the darkness. Yes. Or else your spirituality will live in the environment of idealism. Which is what most men of God preach. Which is the mindset many people have. Idealism. Good is, is a nice idea. You can get excited about preaching idealism. But if you cannot work out the righteousness of that you know, idea. It's as good as nothing. Come on Isaiah you've said a lot. <laughs> Let's go on. Uh, verse 10 according to the grace so now you understand what grace is we have got to redefine amen scripture as we mature as we grow in the things of god friends this is the 21st century this is amen the seventh day of the month amen of january 2024 our understanding of truth today cannot be equated amen with how we used to see it amen in 2021 or 2020 there has to be an upgrade why because the word of god is life the things of God lives, it grows. Just as you grow, the things of God grows. Scripture grows. That same scripture you know that you read amen, three years ago. Today, they bring you to the same scripture. You are seeing something else. Why? Because the scripture is alive, is living, is organic. It's organic. So according to the grace of God which has been given to me, Paul says, as a wise master builder. There are no foolish builders. If you're a foolish builder, you're one building your house, amen, on a what? On a sand. I don't want to be a foolish builder. I want to be a wise master builder. Alright? 
I want to be a wise builder. A wise builder is not just interested about the finished product. A wise builder, amen, is first interested about the solidity of the structure. A wise builder, amen, is interested in the solidity of the foundation. Because the easiest way to bring down a structure, amen, is to build a weak foundation. If you have a weak foundation, you have a compromising building. Meaning that every amount, no matter the gem, the diamond, the gold you have used, amen, to, to decorate, amen, what you have built, is going to be a waste at the end of the day. Because the foundation is not going to be able to hold what you have built. Unfortunately, this is how many people build. We like, amen, to, you know, to emphasize on what people see. Oh, Jesus, help me here. Our building, amen, is often an emphasis of what people see. So, we can always draw the attention of people just like they drew the attention of Jesus, amen, to the, to the, to the temple of Herod. Even the disciple of Jesus, amen, was also entrapped. They say, have you seen this building? <laughs> It's always about the outward. I mean, the outward should look nice, but not at the expense of the foundation. I love good things. I love nice things. I love it, but not at the expense of good quality character. You can have both. It's just that it will take time. Because when God, a man, begins to emphasize on foundation, then he goes into all kinds of dimensions. He goes into all kinds, all kinds of places. I mean, he touches things you don't want him to touch. You understand? He, he monitors the material. He scrutinizes. He inspects every amount of you know, uh, uh, materials that is mixed together for that foundation. He is very brutal when it comes to issue of foundation. He does it because God is not going to jeopardize his asset, his investment. Just because somebody really wants to quickly build something for others to see and admire. You want people to admire it and then tomorrow the thing crumble? The same people who admire it, who say, wow, the same people will call you foolish. The same very people. The same people, all right, will call you, you understand, names. Because they can see. The same people will say, no, 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 you can't trust this person. Have you ever had people in your life that you thought, thought are trustworthy? You thought, ah, no, this one is authentic. Only after a while, maybe two, three months, maybe even two years, three years down the line, and you regretted ever relating with them. I have people like that. I know people like that. Say, oh my word, this one is a bad story. I thought when I met you, I thought, well, that's why we need to have insight, we need to have the right measure, the right understanding, we need to have the right amen. You see, when God begins to talk about building, you will never find where God gave man amen the, the latitude the you know the, the 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 idea or god says well you 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 use your discretion <laughs> huh? use your own discretion i just want you to build me you know a temple i want you to build me an ark i want you to build me a family but you i mean i have given you enough just use your discretion if you have found any place like that please let me know so that I can also learn. So I can use my discretion. Amen. You will never find. Anywhere in the word of God. Where God asks people to build something for him. And he said to them. Use your discretion. No, no, no. God is very precise. God is very direct. About his order about what he wants about the measure about the material amen he goes to the extent of telling them the height the length the breadth the width of what he wants he is very precise
if you're going to work with God, you must understand mathematics because God will give you this one is three cubit, that one is six cubit. It is very, very precise. God never asks you to do anything by asking you to employ your own idea. It's not God. At least not the God that I know. Not the God of the Bible. The work, the work of God and the word of God from Genesis to Revelation are precise. And in fact, science, I mean, science that are open, that are truthful, they will tell you that certain things that has been written in the word of God has been found to be accurate. There is no minute, second, hallelujah, yes, that God puts in the Bible in relating to something that happened in history that when you go cross check you will not see so that's how precise God is to the point the Bible says he knows the number of the of the hair in your head not one of them not one falls to the ground without him knowing that that is number you know two million three hundred and thirty one air he knows he knows every hair by name you just go to the Baba you go every hair he knows them by number by name every cell in your body every genotype every DNA every aspect of your being every nuclear every nucleus he knows them by name he designed you is a masterpiece He's a master designer So you cannot bring your mind into the things of God. When God says a season has ended in your life, you, you know that that is work because you have to go back to him. He must show you the blueprint of the next season of your life. He must tell you and give you direction where you're going where you must go what must happen how you must get there what and what you know he must be the one telling you it's not you oh i think that place should be the next place no 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 it doesn't work like that with god are you with me very very important that we understand this all right according to the grace of god which was given to me as a wise master builder that was what led to all of this thing that I've just said. As a wise master builder, a wise wisdom must be applied to the constructions of the things of God. As a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. And another builds on it. My word. I admire the, the work of, you know, Apostle Paul. The other just said, I admire the work of Apostle Paul because he's not a selfish builder. Which of course is what, you know, people like me and I know a lot of people, maybe a few, have done. Very few people build foundation for others to build upon. Most people, most apostles, most pastors, they build the foundation and they build that foundation only for them to be able to build upon alone. So if somebody, if I lay a foundation and somebody else come, I want to build on that foundation, they'll be finding it, you know, difficult. Why? Because I have tampered with that foundation. That foundation was not Christ. The footing of that foundation was not Christ. The materials of that foundation was Christ mixed with, you know, our church vision, <laughs> you know, mixed with our own ideas, mixed with a little bit of Isaiah, a little bit of, you know, what I learned from the American church, a little bit of what I picked from, you know, the African idea of church, a little bit of what I learned from, you know, uh, John Maxwell book, a little bit of what I learned from Miles Moreau, a little bit of what I learned from that bishop. Uh, you know, that foundation is a mixed breed. You know why that soft foundation cannot carry the things of God? Are you getting my point? So now you understand why certain people cannot carry the things of the kingdom. 
because the foundation was not designed to carry the things of the kingdom the foundation was designed to carry church thing denomination thing our church that's a wrong foundation Paul said as a wise master builder I have laid the foundation and others built upon it by the grace of God I had built a foundation where some of our people have gone to become pastors leaders in other churches in other you know communities and the reason why they can function in other churches is because whoever is the leader or head of that church must have seen something in them and said whoa this will have got the right foundation whoever was your father whoever laid this foundation did a good job it makes my work easy for me but certain people they go certain place you build things on them they destroy the work because the foundation all right, was crooked the foundation was compromised the foundation was you know man's idea man's projection the foundation or right, that were built that were given to them was to project man not christ not the kingdom of god jesus this is school of ministry friends <laughs> these are these are ministry stuff friends but that's what god told us this year He's gonna be building us to become ministers okay as a wise master builder can you see we i've not even gone to the scripture that i have for today but i must touch that scripture quickly let's finish this as a wise master builder i have laid the foundation i have laid the foundation and others builds upon it then he gave the warning but let each one take heed how how the build on it remember friends let me remind you why we are dealing with this why we are touching this because god wants us to move into the realm where we can begin to occupy our place and advance the advancement yes of kingdom agenda within the 21st century we must push the things of god amen to a conclusive end so that if Jesus decide, amen, to come in this decade or next, we have done our job and we've done it well. And if he chooses to tarry for another hundred years, we have, we, have, we have been able to build something that the next posterity can build upon. I love that. So our argument is not when Jesus is coming or if he's coming or he's not coming. He's going to come back. But when he comes, he must find faith alive faith that is mobile faith amen that is engaging not faith that is hiding that is running amen as a wise master builder i have laid the foundation and others must build on it so we've got to know what is that foundation what does that foundation look like what is the material of that foundation what is the paradigm of that foundation what is the purpose and essence of such a foundation how do we build that foundation amen in a day where marriages are collapsing in a day where all kinds of perversion is taking place within homes in the life amen of society what kind of a foundation we need to revisit that foundation so that amen we also don't get eroded amen by the flood of destruction that is destroying homes and family and relationship amen yes and kids and teenagers in our day we have to go back to those foundation where our church amen can be you know when i say church our community amen our, you know kingdom community can be insulated from the flood we can have foundation amen that that are you know that sh that are shockproof from tsunami that are shockproof amen from you know uh, uh, what what do you call it from you know vo volcano amen from all kinds of eruption amen from all kinds of tectonic move we want to have a foundation amen that is shockproof that when they say tsunami is coming your house is standing karabayada You see how the tsunami visited China the beginning of this year. First, that is that's a prophetic amen sign. First, China was visited with a massive tsunami, seven point something magnitude. 
it was a it was a big one so what is the law saying again we have to build a dimension of a lifestyle that when this thing happened your house will still be standing you know what i mean by your house huh i'm sure by now you know what i mean by your house your belief system your attitude every other thing can collapse everything around you may, may be flooded away but your faith is standing intact when they come to you you're still smiling the joy of the lord is your strength you know that whatever you've lost you can regain it because your faith is intact your belief system your attitude is intact you know that whatever is lost, hallelujah, can be covered by insurance. But there is one thing insurance cannot cover. And that is the state of your spirit, the state of your mind. You notice that you can't insure that. <laughs> so you have to have amen, an insurance in the word of God. Built upon the solid foundation. And all of the things I've been saying, all right, it speaks to a mentality that I'm going to quickly look at. So let everyone who is going to build on this foundation take heed and be careful how they build for no other foundation. In other words, what Paul is saying here is when I lay the correct foundation, please don't come and build something perverted on it. <laughs> for no other foundation can anyone lay than, the, than, than that which has been laid by who? By Jesus Christ. I love that. And this is why amen my ministry you know often speaks to the issues of foundation because foundation is not just about solidity it's also about mentality it's about philosophy the foundation of your life amen defines your value system have you noticed that they say the church is built upon the foundation of the prophets and the apostle and jesus christ being the chief cornerstones the pillar that holds the foundation together the chief cornerstone amen are the four angles of pillar you have in the foundation if you're going to build up all right you must have a pillar here pillar here pillar here a pillar there those are the chief cornerstones the chief cornerstone where every other thing is built will rest upon but the foundation of that order hallelujah is the the prophet and the apostle why because the scriptures say we are co-builders with god because we are co-builders with God. So everything is not just about Jesus. No, Jesus expresses himself, his life, amen, through the giftings, through the ascended gifts. So like I always say, you will notice that the work of an apostle and the prophet are foundational. What does that mean? Does it mean that once they lay the foundation, we don't see them again? No, it means that they must lay, amen, they must define not just the material amen but the quality of the foundation depending on what kind of a house they want to build in that region amen they must come they are the wise master builder they are the chief architect architect all right when, when they come they see the they, they, they survey the land they survey ah, okay all right we know that the kind of foundation we have to build must be this thick must be this wide you understand why because they, they can see in the eyes of the spirit they know the region the foundation of the of the house in ephesus is must be different from that of you know the church in corinth there was be different from the the church in rome amen each 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 environment has got amen is unique style is unique you know you know texture soil you understand there are certain places you can see that the soil are more mature you go to certain other you know certain place you see the soil are more rocky you understand so all when you come and start testing all the various soil you know okay uh, uh, you can't build that kind of foundation here and that is what you you see that is where the work of god is and that's where the real work is so when you lay those foundation and you start building you can go somewhere else no jupiter will shake that house because when you lay the right foundation and christ the chief cornerstone is allowed into uh-huh and then the shepherd you know and the other they can come and do their thing you're gone 
The, the shepherd can then start building, can start, you know, training and start doing what they do. The evangelist can go out and do their thing and bring it to, into the house. The teacher can come, hallelujah, and teach. They will not teach outside, out, out of the order of the foundation and the cornerstone. God, Abayada. You won't be afraid, amen, to bring a minister. Some pastors can, they would dare not bring certain grace into their house because they know the foundation they built is weak. They know when they, when they invite Isaiah into that place, finish, the job is finished. Because their house cannot carry the truth. I've seen it. And those who are wise, the first thing they do is they will seek for the ministry of the apostles and the prophet to come help rebuild. We've done that in Johannesburg. In fact, we did that, I think, in three churches. They said, come help us. This, this is a foundation built on a pastoral mindset. The man of God told me this. The apostle before he, you know, I mean, he's going to be with the Lord now. He saw the grace of God in my life. He said, I know you can help us transit into an apostolic house. And that was a good spirit. And we did that for almost six months. We were, we were transiting the church from, you know, a pastoral evangelical mindset to a prophetic apostolic kingdom focused house. I don't know how they're doing now, but we laid those foundation for them. And you don't just do that in a house. You can also do that in a business. You can do that in your entrepreneurial, you know, uh, uh, you know, initiative. You can do that, amen, in your home. Is your home built, amen, upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets? We just run in a house. You have no vision. You have no sense of direction. We just husband and wife, you know. And what are you talking about? Oh, well, it doesn't work like that. It's going to collapse. The tsunamis are coming. The rain is coming. The flood is going to come. So that when anything starts happening within that house, and all, there's government in the house, that's what the foundation is. Bring government. You, you address things. You put things in their order. Sorry. No, that is not allowed. We don't do that here. We don't allow that kind of a spirit here. If a wrong spirit come, a wrong teacher come, somebody come and start kicking it, kicking it there, we put a stop to it. What? The foundation is laid. What are we talking about? How to occupy. And to occupy, our life first must be occupied with the right material. You can't go out that, out, outside to say you want to represent Christ. You want to represent the kingdom of God. But you are weak. But you are compromised. You don't have the right foundation because you don't have the right belief system. You have not been taught. You've not been exposed, amen, to the true ministry of the apostolic everything you you talk about the apostolic today is just name and you know and fame you know and kick it here and kick it there and all you're talking about is something totally different from you know the the, the, the spirit of the apostolic fathers you've not been built you've got zeal but you have no knowledge or maybe you have a little bit of knowledge but you have no zeal So vision to occupy is what we're dealing with. We have to know that vision. That vision must be defining our movement. Must be defining how we journey. Must be defining how we advance. Must be defining, amen, our relationship. When you know this kind of truth, amen, it begins to separate you from certain places. Certain churches you stop going. Why? Because that thing does not build in you the kind of competency, the kind of capacity, the kind of ideology and philosophy that is kingdom oriented that will allow you, amen, to thrive and to finish well. You move. You say, sorry, I'm done. You don't run away. You go to the man of God straight. You look him at the eye. You say, sir, I think it's time for me to move on something else the spirit of the lord is emphasizing in my life you don't need to run away you don't need to create strife no no walk up to the man of god in humility and say i'm moving on where am i going? well i don't know yet i'm going to wait on the lord but there's something else the lord is emphasizing listen you are allowed to do that 
Somebody came to me years ago and said, this is, he went and said this to, to the man of God. And the man of God said, I'm going to curse you. I said, go and tell the man, Isaiah Philip say, you have no right, you have no power to do such a thing. You don't own the people. Go, you tell that person, go and tell that person, I say. So let him come and confront me. It takes an apostolic grace, an apostolic father, an apostolic voice to speak like that. And that person to today thriving and advancing in the things of God. We don't have time to waste. Your life is a resource for kingdom advancement. If in the wrong place and they're not willing to change, leave the place so you don't die with them. And if you're in a place where, all right, you're given the opportunity to grow, grow and increase, stay there. Assist the people. Giving your best. If the man of God wants to learn from the things you're picking, be free to share. There's a mandate we have and we must accomplish, particularly as we press towards 2024. We are looking beyond the days before us. We want to press on and continue to advance in the light of kingdom truth. All right. I've said all that to bring you to this point. Philippians 2. Remember, we're laying the framework for kingdom occupation. This is what you call kingdom ministry. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who existing in the form of God did not consider it to be equal with God something to be grabs I want you to see this technology I'm not, I know I'm not going to finish it now but let me just introduce this and then when we come next time we'll pick it from this point I promise you we'll pick it from this point because this is very, very vital. Let this mind. Now that word mind, alright, is a very powerful word. That word, amen, suggests to us a belief system, a mentality, a paradigm, a way of thinking. Now, a way of thinking, listen to this, a way of thinking defines our perspective defines our values defines our interaction defines our ability you understand to to express what we know in the way we have perceived it that word mind is very very powerful it is the center of your expression because it is the center of how you process what you hear, what you see. It defines how you smell things and how you respond. Are you with me? Let this mind be in you. I wish I have time. You know, these are, these are school of ministry materials. And I thank God that if you are if you are watching this morning, well, you are being you are being trained, you are being equipped, you are being empowered. All right. He said, "Let this mind, that mind, amen, is very, very, very important." That word comes from the Greek word, pronio, 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 to exercise your mind. To exercise, amen, your thought pattern. To exercise an opinion. It's, it's, it's a reflection of your disposition. Of your perception. It is how you see things. It speaks into an interest. It is how you look at things. You see, as you're looking at me, there, there are things going on in your mind. Amen. There is a way you're you, you, are, you are checking and you are trying to process what I'm saying. Are you getting me? He said, let this attitude, let this 
belief system. There's a way you think. There's a way you reason. Maybe that will help you to understand why I say certain things. The way why I say certain things, the way I say them is because I'm picking those things from the from you know what I have received from the mind of Christ. To have the mind of Christ, you have to amen. Get rid of your old mindset. Your your old mindset, amen, defines how amen you act, you 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 behave, you interact, amen, how you live life, how you see things, how you interpret what people are saying. We all have frames of interpretation. We all have you know program. We've been programmed in a particular form and way of thinking. Jesus came, amen, with a frame of thinking. You see, that was how Jesus was able to finish his ministry. He had a frame. He had a frame of mind. He had a frame of philosophy. That's why I tell people, spiritual things are philosophy. The world system understands the idea of philosophy more than most Christians. There is a philosophy of how a general American preacher thinks. There's a philosophy to how a man preachers in Africa thinks and see things and interpret things ministry in Africa amen the philosophy is using God using gift amen to build something to get you understand some you know cloud to get a position of authority because the general idea of you know the African culture is about trying to prove a point and the reason for that is because of where we're coming from. When you're coming from a bad drop, amen, of, you know, of, of, you know, uh, um, slavery, all right, slavery mindset, particularly when you're in South Africa, you're coming from a backdrop of apartheid, all right, you, everything that you're doing, that you're doing will seek to want to prove a point. You will hardly want to do something from just a position of, you know, you seeking to please God. Your, even your idea of pleasing God will be defined by trying to make a point, prove a point to people. Why? Because your dignity has been taken from you. Your identity has been taken from you. You have been limited, all right, by, you know, certain, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, social, uh, economic, you know, uh, 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 privileges. When you live in an environment when they say, well, sorry, that place is for the whites, this side is for the blacks. You cannot go to there, you can't shop there, you can't go here, you, you are not entitled to those privileges. And suddenly you have, you know, um, political freedom and you don't have apostles and prophets who have been signed up to see those psychological, you know, uh, 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 depravities, those psychological issues, you understand? And you have not dealt with them. Do you know that till today, issues of apartheid has not been dealt with by the church? Why? Because we don't have, you know, apostles who have clear understanding of how to deal with those things. And we left it to politicians who themselves, amen, are, you know, product of the same, you know, apartheid regime even though many of them ran away you know they, they they tried to lead from outside but when they came back they came back you understand to want to now okay of course you know prove a point that we can bring a change and how they decide to bring a change was by enriching themselves first why because they were also deprived So it's all about trying to prove a point, trying to do something to prove a point. And that is a manifestation, you understand, of a dysfunctional lifestyle, belief system. And that, of course, has filtered. Of course, the church is an extension amen, of the society. You cannot separate the church from the society. Do you understand? But the church ought to be the one, amen, changing the society. But if the church, amen, is also drinking from the well of the society, how do you think, amen, the church will be able to help the society? This will tell you the reason why, amen, yes, 80, 80 to 90% of homes are broken and shattered because they, they, what is sourcing or informing, amen, those broken homes are speaking to issues, amen, of, you know, of pride and, and arrogance and, and hatred, you know, I want to do this by myself, I want to do all, all of that, amen, a manifestation of a singularity of a spirit that governs the territory. Only those who have apostolic insight, amen, and foresight can deal with those things from the root. 
Unfortunately, very few people are dealing with that. So even our idea of church is, you know, you build a church to want to, you know, help the people to, to make money. You know, you know, to start a business, to do this, at least for those who can do that. And for those who cannot do that, you use the church to reinforce the impoverishment of the people. So rather than the people's mind being changed to developing a capacity, a competence to go learn, hallelujah, and exercise, you know, their freedom in their areas of giftings. No, we, we make the people depend on certain ideas and belief so that the people really never, amen, truly walk in freedom. Oh God, I don't know how to say this. I, I, I don't know how to express this. Because, you see, if we understand these things that I'm talking about, it changes our life. Because how we think is informed by the predominant value system, all right, that speaks into our life. Your life is a culmination, amen, of experience. Those experiences, amen, are culminations of thought patterns. And those thought patterns, amen, are in twofold. Some of them are deliberate programming. Certain things are done as said, amen, to program you to think in a particular way, to see in a particular way, to behave in a particular way, to respond in a particular way, to the point that they can predict how you're going to respond. South Africa is a nation that you can do a case, a case study of how humans will respond to certain behavior to certain belief system all right yes and god has given me the grace to, to see those things and if you live in an environment like america where you know they will tell you is a is a land of you know where your dreams can come true it all depends on the area and who you're talking to because in that environment there is still disparity and if they discover that you've got a giftings, then the system comes for you. They hijack, you're going to start functioning your gift, but that system hijack your giftings and, and control it to the point of tailoring that gift, amen, to, to serve a particular narrative that is not necessarily God. Even though you're using God, even though you're calling God, oh God help me here. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? So, what you see as the idea of church basically is a psychological idea of projecting, you know, capitalism or commerce. Or commerce. It's the same thing, all right, the, the, you know, the, the, the Greek Empire did. And even, the, of course, the Roman Empire did. All right using psychology you see some of those very you know good philosophers that came in the days of the plutus and the rest of them all right those philosophy came from somewhere and those philosophy were addressing were engaging certain belief system in society all right to the point that they use those philosophy in fact the government used those philosophy you know to build their empire it's the same thing that you know constantine did he used amen the the idea of the church he used what the church was good at amen yes to build his empire to build something that of course we know today became the roman catholic church unfortunately that system is still in place so even when people say oh, God has called me, I, you know, I, I've heard God. If you begin to probe their belief system, if you begin to probe their thinking, if you begin to probe deep into their idea of church, you would have discovered that it is pseudo. It is selfish. The, what they think is a zeal and, and a passion for God. In fact, it is to promote an idea and to build a platform for themselves even though they will tell you no self is not there but if you would discern and probe deep you will find self at the root because they cannot do anything without being seen how would you like to run a church that you are not projected 
And this is the reason why 99% of churches that are built are pastored by those who started them and they died there. If they don't die there, they pass the church to their children. That's how you know that self is the projector. Self is the source of what we call church. How many people can start a church and after the thing has bloomed and grow, you leave it and move somewhere else and you give it to somebody that you know is committed and faithful, not to you, but to God. You see, there's a litmus test to test all of this thing that we call God and we call the kingdom. The end of the day is not kingdom. It's the kingdom of man. It's not different from the kingdom of Bahrain. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have to build something that is beyond self. That is beyond me. That is beyond, you know, projecting something and trying to keep something for myself. Let this mind. Three and a half years, Jesus was done. He left the work of human redemption into the hand of 12 people. One has gone bonkers. They had to, they had to cast lot, you know, to get somebody else to replace Judas. That is how f- you know, free, f- you know, f- liberated the idea of following Christ is that he's not afraid to live. You know, Jesus could have lived more than 33 years, you know that. He could have waited behind and see how, you know, what he has done, how he's thriving, you know, in the hand of those guys. He would have just been mentoring them from afar, all right? I don't know you guys can carry on, but let's spend another 20 years. Let me just be monitoring, you know, so I can correct you guys. In case you don't do it right, all right? At least I'll be your mentor. I will just be at the back. You guys can... He was done. He was gone. That's ministry. Let this mind be in you. So, the next time we meet, we will continue from this concept, from this idea. I hope I don't forget. Because it's a very good point that we need to look into, we need to emphasize. If truly we are going to really please God if we're gonna really you know occupy as we are called to occupy remember we have not even begin to talk about the gifts because when the good man of the house was going he gave them gift he gave them money give them talent whatever you want to call it but he gave them something to trade with to do to work with in order to occupy all right you can't occupy just by mouth you got to have something that you've got to engage we have not even touched that area but we're gonna get there but suffice to say We want to understand what it means in this season, amen, to live within the context of the mind of Christ. We're dealing with the framework that will allow us, amen, yes, to build the kingdom value system, to build, you know, a powerful mentality that is apostolic, meaning that we are sent, amen, and we know where we've been sent, and we we exercise that, you know, authority of a sent one to accomplish what we have been sent to carry out, hallelujah. I love that. So friends, this is where I'm going to stop this morning. And I pray that we will continue to allow our life, amen, to reflect, to manifest heaven's program for our day. Because indeed, God needs, amen, workers who can work with him. Not solo workers. Not workers who want to work for themselves and do their own thing. No, the Bible says we are are God's fellow workers. All right? We are God's field. We are God's building. Oh, come on, friends. I hope this word, amen, will help you to really begin to understand God's program for this season because the Lord is calling us, amen, to be part of the church that he is building that will manifest his glory in this season. Thank you so very much, everyone, this morning for joining me. Really appreciate it. I pray God will continue to resource you I pray that heaven will continue to build you. I pray your life will continue to manifest heaven's intentions and program for this season in time. This has been a time where I believe, amen, God 
is building and equipping a people in the earth that will reflect his glory. Oh, Father, we thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much, everyone. We'll see you again. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.